Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler, teaching electromagnetics. In this video, I'm going to be discussing transformers and, in particular, deriving some results related to ideal transformers. This is section 6.3 in the Ulibi textbook. So first, let's think back to something that we've discussed in this class previously, which is what would happen if you had a coil which has a current moving in it. And so if you had a coil and the current is moving in this direction and it's counterclockwise, we can see by using the right hand rule that there is going to be a magnetic field that looks like this coming out of the coil. Now, what if we were to put inside of that coil some kind of strongly magnetic material? So this could be in real life iron, or in an ideal case, this could be something uh, that's, that approaches infinity, but you add in a very strongly magnetic material that goes inside of this uh, loop of wires, and this is going to end up strongly linking the flux between these two, two coils now, if you added in a second coil on the first side. So we had the first coil, we know what happens to the magnetic field, and if we added in a strongly magnetic material, we can see that the flux is going to be very strong through that material in that direction, just like we saw up here. It's going to link through that magnetic material and it's going to link to that second set of coils that's uh, touching a resistor. Okay, so we call this on the left hand side the primary and that has an AC source. So the left hand side, the primary side has a source, the right hand side is secondary. As a resistor, we denote these with subscript one and subscript two for the number of uh, coils, voltage, and currents. Now, the linkage between these two things uh, is affected by the direction of the windings. So on the top, you can see that it's wound in the clockwise direction, which produces a voltage that goes plus to minus, whereas in the bottom, it is wound in the opposite direction, and it is minus to plus. So for the transformer, we have this um, strongly linked flux, and let's take a look at why that might be the case. So if we were to um, add in a coordinate system where the Z is going up, now let's kind of tilt our, our transformer from here into here. So now we're kind of looking down at this. So we're sort of looking down in this direction. And we can see that as the current wraps around this way, we're going to have a B field. Um, that flux density that's coming out of the page at us. And so the flux that these two are linked by is going to be related to that magnetic flux density dotted with a surface area. And that surface area right, is what is going to cover this entire transformer that the windings are around. So we can see that if we used a very large mu, then this flux is going to be very high and it's going to be linked uh, very well between these two uh, sets of coils. And in the ideal case, right, we would say that that mu goes to infinity, which is where we get this very strong flux linkage. So in that case where we have that ideal flux uh, getting quite large due to the fact that our um, flux density is going through a very strongly magnetic material, right, this is approaching infinity, we would say that the voltage one, so whatever that source voltage is, is going to be equal to uh, minus the number of the coils on the on that left hand primary side, and then multiplied by the derivative of the flux with respect to time. Now, if the they are very strongly linked with this mu material that ap approaches infinity, then the flux in one is going to be equal to the flux in two and therefore these two things are going to be equal to each other which leads us to uh, a couple of uh, um, relationships that kind of encompass what it means to be a transformer and that is that the voltage in one the primary voltage divided by the secondary voltage is exactly equal to the number of windings in the primary divided by the number of windings in the secondary. And in the ideal case, if there is no loss, this means that the power in coil one is equal to the power in coil two due to this very strong flux linkage condition, which furthermore leads to the this relationship between the currents. 
Now, we can represent this left-hand side, the primary side, we can represent it as a voltage that uh, creates a current through those coils into a load. And if we call that load Rn, we have this relationship from Ohm's law, or we can extend this to Zn if it was uh, complex V1 and I1. That gives us a further and final relationship between the Z1, which would be here, and the Z2, or Z load, which is here in the complex case. So therefore the uh, resistance, or the input and load impedance are also uh, strongly related via the number of loops that are made in the coil in the primary and secondary. So we call it a transformer because in the ideal case it transforms voltage, current, and impedance based exactly on N1 and N2, the number of winding coils in the primary and secondary side. Hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video.